A YouTube content farm genuinely means a channel in which is purposefully creating content that are low quality and in high quantities with keywords and algorithms in order to fill up the trending scene of popular media with their own content to gain monetary value. These content farms generally are short videos to multi-hour long gameplay videos. And while there are many instances of this content farm spreading inappropriate or dodgy content, I wanted to focus on 4 channels that are one of the most successful content forums in YouTube, starting out with a Minecraft channel that is on the tamer side of inappropriate content but nonetheless pretty weird. Kobe started out making generic modded Minecraft gameplay targeted to children, pretty much similar to other Minecraft content. What made Kobe stand out was his impersonation of other Minecraft content creators such as Afmel, a content creator that has been linked into inspiring Kobe and his style of content. Its channel in this video is linked with one deadly scene of sorts because that is really popular in all types of case study videos nowadays and I want to get that fat stack. So Kobe represents the deadly scene of lust. The uncontrollable feeling of sexual desires. Every one of Kobe's videos shows some sort of oversexualization of a character and such. While it is arguable that what Kobe is doing does not count as content form, Kobe heavily uses keywords which are popular among the Generation Alpha which may I remind you will end and the new cool kids generation will be the Generation Beta. Mark my words, they'll actually be the redemption arc. Kobe started heavily filling out his video length in order for increased retention time, aka kids leaving their tablets while his dog shit videos are playing, and more people get recommended his videos. And to say the least, his videos are pretty subpar, but the contents of the channel and what it represents really strike me that this guy is literally not fucking okay. Even now, he still has this parasocial relationship with Afmao which many people have noticed that it isn't really Afmao. And I ran out of things to say about him so let's just talk about other people's videos and paste them here. While researching about Kobe, I discovered a few videos about him including Z-Man's the absolute worst Minecraft YouTuber. He didn't say ever so his point still stands. In this video, I found out about two things. Number one, people that were unwantfully sexualized is an actual rule in the YouTube guidelines so his content can actually be taken down. I, just, I don't read this shit, I'm sorry. And number two, he has a Twitter account. Now before going to his awful Twitter feed, which is basically just like all bait content, check this hot take. Who cares what content he makes? Sure, the guy is cringe, but his main channel has 55 million views, he's been more successful on YouTube than then? Almost everyone criticizing him. Content sucks, but if he didn't do it, someone else would. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Is this like an effect of people chronically on the YouTube grind? He does have a point. It's also partially YouTube's fault that he is getting away with this kind of content. But does that really excuse him of actually breaking the rules because someone else would do it? People criticize him because his content does actually break the rules or it's just plain wrong. Also the fact that he literally addresses the fact that everyone that has criticized his style of content is not as successful as him is just so pretentious. And of course this enabled Kobe's ego. Sorry arrogance of being the sigma mill. One day I will rule the world. One day you peasants will scream my name. One day your kids will do anything to be like me. Believe it, because it will happen. I know this is just all bait treats, but where's the fun with that? To all my haters, just remember, you're one bank transfer away from licking caviar up my balls. <laughs> I had two options. One, stay poor. My parents aren't rich like all of you haters. Number two, get rich with brain what content. I'm not rich yet but definitely doing better than any kid my age. What would you have picked? Unfortunately, you are one decision away from YouTube actually doing their job and demonetizing you. But fortunately, you're a family friendly YouTuber. In the end, I do agree that he is just doing this all just for clout or money. Game is game. But in a way that he's done like this, it's just straight up scummy. I've covered them in the past so I'll just give a brief yet updated out view of the channel. Lanky Box is a dual owned channel that started out making music video parodies until eventually turning into gaming content because it was the most profitable. Nowadays it is rare to see a Lanky Box video being under an hour long, nonetheless being posted hours within a previous video. What isn't rare is this uncut gameplay of the two playing Roblox games for hours 
most likely having a team of editors and staff which you can just searching up linked in Lankybox. And there are a ton of them ranging from video editors to hiring managers to staff handling their merch. It's safe to say that the Lankybox channel has been maximized to its fullest potential to earn more money. How Lankybox has attempted to grow their influence among children, they may have intentionally or unintentionally manipulated many kids into watching and wasting the time watching their hour long videos with hyper fast editing in the beginning to entice children and then abusing that attention into making them invest their free time into giving them more money. Lankybox net worth is approximately 30 million dollars. Solely by just manipulating children into watching content that doesn't give much value to them other than feeding their minds with useless memes and fan sizes. The next few channels will be dedicated to the other side of YouTube, Shorts. Content farms in YouTube Shorts has already hit an all-time high when retention abuse saw the rise of the same short being posted multiple times and the channel receiving subscribers and views before being ultimately sold off to people illegally buying YouTube channels. People are now spamming other people's shorts to gain more attention. I have some screenshots of the spammers. I'm obviously blurring the channels because I don't want to give this shithead some kind of recognition. One simply just don't show the subscriber count. But these people are basically just spamming and put just posting the same stolen sort and are actually getting subscribers and viewers. However, the most popular content forms in YouTube sorts are not the result of a black market but simply just laziness. Man like Isaac represents how laziness can unintentionally cause a content form of such. While he has gone to be a quintessential TikToker and is genuinely creative, whenever he isn't creative lies the definition. I'm totally reading here, am I right? I made a video about his laziness a while back. The average UK robber has stole something that are not shoes anymore, but in fact, the entire videos themselves. Well, there is a slight possibility that he actually took this clip individually. But I heavily doubt that if it's gonna take no time to properly crop this overused facial expression, which he does a lot, I do not expect the same person to gather like 20 other heavily stolen clips together with the same format as the others. But to give a brief summary, he was stealing clips of popular videos and just pasting it as his own. While many other channels are pretty guilty of this style of content, with Isaac's whole career building off of his comedy and personality, it really feels disappointing that the route he decides to take whenever he doesn't have a video to upload is to just compile other clips and lazily put himself in the video, a prime example of quantity over quality. His other shorts are also aren't much of quality either, repeating the same jokes, repeating the same sort, and just not the kind of content that gives much value other than edgy unfunny jokes that kids replicate because they think are cool. While Isaac isn't really a content farm, in the context of the definition, it kind of does. Finally, we have our last channel and probably the most relevant in this video because he's probably the most recent channel in this video to be involved in controversy. Master Ogre runs, well, most likely other channels run by other people. Many of those channels all have the exact same style of content, stealing other people's clips or videos and reaping all of the benefits and many other people are starting to notice this trend, a lot of hate comments, a lot of dislikes, the whole shebang. In the past, his entire career was almost entirely deleted because of false copyright claims and months later was threatening to leave YouTube because of being unfairly demonetized for his stolen ideas and problematic videos. That's one hell of a way of paraphrasing stolen videos. YouTube practically folded because of the heavy backlash that they got. While I am in no support of his downfall and such, his response seemed so guilty to the point where it's straight up funny. In recent times, people criticized Ugre for his racist and filled jokes, calling him a racist or a well, he started to make some of the most controversial jokes on the entire internet. And I have a few specific examples that I want to talk about. One relating to racism and the other to literal pedophilia. Yes, the thumbnail of this video wasn't a cheap lie to get clicks. Which I do feel that it is a little nuts calling him a pedophile. But with his jokes trying to push the boundaries, just trying to be edgy, I'd agree that this kind of jokes is a bit much. And many people have criticized Ugre's usage of AI generated imagery in his music covers, even going as far as calling his songs AI generated, which I hardly believe, simply because I have no idea how to detect AI creation in songs. And while you can criticize their methods and approaches into YouTube content creation, at the end of the day, they're just here to make money. Even in a way that is pretty much manipulating children into watching their brain dead content, if they use their money to create better content or just in order to live their life, 
good for them. Huh? Is their methods respectable? Nah. But you don't really need to respect them of any sort. I genuinely think that just going to the channel and spamming hate comments or just ranting about them is just a waste of time. And you should probably focus on other things and probably focus on your children not be falling in that sort of manipulation tactics. Until that if it actually gives you hella views from chronically online people, which is fair game. <laughs>